Patrick J. Adams joins me now live in Studio Q. You know I'm a big fan of the show. I do know. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, congrats <laughs> on the sixth season. Thank you. Thank I you. think I'm more excited about that than you are. <laughs> you, you have been a big fan. We appreciate it. Um, in suits your character, Mike Ross. He's a bit of an outsider. He's a risk taker. Uh -huh. What first attracted you to the role? Uh, unemployment at first. Uh, it was, uh, I was having a tough time in Los Angeles. I've been very blessed to be working quite a bit after I graduated from school. I went to school for theater, but um, I had actually gotten fired from a job a few months prior to the audition, and I was sort of at rock bottom. And uh, the script came in, and it, it was really a story about a guy at rock bottom. It was about a guy who sort of felt like he had no other options, and he was sort of making bad decisions um, on the way to trying to take care of his, himself and his family. And uh, it was just the easiest audition I ever had because <laughs> of that. I walked in and got to sit in front of a bunch of Hollywood producers and say, like, please like I had that scene where with Harvey from the pilot yep. where I'm uh, explaining to him that I deserve this shot and that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to murder it for him. And, uh, and uh, I could just look in the eyes of these producers and say those words <laughs> and feel them very truthfully. Hmm. You yeah. felt that urgency. Yeah, I, I knew that I could do this part with my eyes closed. I knew that I had gone through enough struggle at that point to have earned the right to, to do this part. Did you carry that energy into the role too? Totally. And, and, and in those first seasons of Suits, you remember, like, Mike is, is a terrified sort of kid he's, because he's not only is he in this high-stakes law firm, uh, he's also not a lawyer and he's keeping that secret. So nervousness was my, you know, my, was my friend. The anxiety was my friend. So I just embraced it. And every scene I could, I was dropping a folder on the ground or falling over myself or saying the wrong thing or sneaking out of a room when Jessica Pearson comes in. You know, that was the fun of it. I didn't have to run away from being nervous because the whole thing was so new to me. Hmm. What about the secrecy aspect? Your character is carrying a secret with him. Uh -huh. I've heard a lot of writers and actors talk about how having a secret is so important mm -hmm. to a character. Mm -hmm. It's been great, but it's also been so great that it hasn't become the main focus of the show. And I think everybody was worried about that at first, that this entire show would end up just being about this guy's secret and every week it's like who's almost going to catch him now or who does catch him but then we managed to convince him not to tell anybody else and and so for me it's been great to sort of play with it but then also as you know into the fourth and fifth season to let it go and to accept like to give ourselves the things narratively that allow him to stay yeah in in this world without having to every episode be worried he's going to be found out okay we've talked about the secrecy we've talked about the urgency what aspect of his character do you connect with most I think his uh, his passion and his desire for for family and for community. Uh, Mike is a character who um, who lost his family uh, early on, and uh, and he doesn't really have many people in his life. And so, going to the office and going to work, they become his family. And so, it's a very he's coming at it from a very different perspective than anyone else on the show. They all have family members. They all have different relationships with people in their lives. For Mike, this is his family, and uh, I connect to that with the people on Suits. That I think of them as my family. Um, but uh, you know, community is very important to me. My group of friends is very important to me. I wouldn't be where I am without them. Well, you know, that's what I love most about the show. I think that's why people keep coming back is this is a cast of characters that love each other. Mm -hmm. And especially in a climate of television where there's so many kind of antiheroes and TV shows where everyone is terrible to everyone. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot kind of like Breaking Bads and Sopranos. Yeah. There's some fearsome people on television. Yeah. Yeah, I is think that a lot of the feedback you've gotten? People really care about that aspect of the show? Yeah, I think they don't necessarily understand why they love it, but I do think that's what it is. Because never have I been a part of something, and I don't really know anyone else who's been a part of something that's such a wide span of, of people who are fans of the show. I mean, I can be walking down the street, and a grandmother and her 16-year-old granddaughter will both stop me and love <laughs> the show and usually say that they watch it together. And to me, that says that this is a show that sort of bridges the gap of that. It's something that all ages can relate to. And what better can people relate to than, than family and to you know, people banding together against a common cause? What about this sort of Bay Street uh, high <laughs> yeah. finance, legal world, young professionals. Yeah, How do they respond to the show? We get a lot of them. I think we had one of them throw himself up against the glass while we were <laughs> shooting downtown the other day. Um, I think they uh, they respond to it in a way too because they're in that environment. They're in those offices. And I think, you know, I never really worked an office job. I had one with my mother employed me after high school in my first job working in an office. But other than that, I'd never really done it. And I think people yearn for connection in those places and they, they, they spend so much time there and especially young people working in finance or accounting or law right now. It's a lot of time in the office and it's high stress 
And I think it's fun to watch a bunch of people who are amazing at what they do, but also there for each other and have each other's backs. I think it's an admirable thing, and people really want to create that environment for themselves in their offices. What were you doing in your office job? <laughs> Not much is the problem. Uh, I was uh, I was filing. My mom is going to kill me. She's somewhere in Georgian Bay listening to this right now. But she actually fired me from my first job. She brought me into the office and told me that she was. She said, "I just don't think you really want to be here." <laughs> so she fired me. So I learned the hard way about hard work. And about seizing opportunities, that's the thing that kept uh, coming back to me as I was kind of reading your bio and thinking about it in context of the show. This show is about Mike seizing this opportunity. You left Toronto at a young age to pursue an opportunity Mm -hmm. uh, to, to go to theater school. Do you think of your life that way too in terms of these moments of sort of boldness and courage and seizing opportunities. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, yeah. I mean, I I remember the fear more than anything. I remember leaving Toronto and going to this very alien place, you know, not just another city, but another country and as similar as the United States and Canada are. It was very different culturally and uh, I had a tough time fitting in for a while. Um, but I think it's important, especially for artists, to to make that leap. You need to disconnect yourself from what you know is, you know, and what's familiar. By the other token, moving back here has been such an amazing gift because it's given me the opportunity to reconnect with this place. And I don't think I ever would have done that on on my own volition. I think I would have left Toronto and sort of left it in the past. And now I get to sort of come back at a very different point in my life and um, having a career and get to really rediscover where I came from and, and, and reconnect with some of my old friends. So that's been a huge gift. What's that been like being able to work on this series from home? This very successful series, but, you know, stay connected to home. You know, at first it was tough because I, I moved to L.A. and my family's there and my fiance's there and my friends are there. And I really, like I said, I packed up Toronto and said that part of my life is done and then went and invested a lot of time and energy into this new place. And then, of course, the minute you get your big break, <laughs> you're, I literally came right back to the room because I didn't have a place to live. So, like, when we started... The first season of Suits, I was back in the room I was in when I was a teenager. Like, I was all my bags 10 years later, dropped them off, and here we are. So it was a little tough, and I felt for a little while I was moving backwards. But again, going back to that theme of community and family, I think it's been such an amazing thing that I've gotten to do. And I can't imagine having done it anywhere else because I have my family here. I have friends here. Uh, It just... I felt right at home right away, and it was a very sort of nerve-wracking first couple of years figuring out how one does this job, because it's a lot. It's a lot of work. um, It's a lot of time, and nobody really teaches you. You just kind of have to learn on the job, so I think Very demanding working on a television series. Yeah, the schedule's really, I mean, for someone who I think was probably, I hate to say maybe even a little lazy before that, uh, it's a huge demand. And not only the, the work, which is 15 hours, 16 hours a day, um, on set, uh, 10 pages we shoot a day usually. But there's the press stuff, so there's the things like this, which I had never done before, and going yeah. to speak to people and talking about your work. I mean, that was just totally alien to me. So there's a huge learning curve, which I guess you might, <laughs> maybe you're going through right now too. Like it's, uh, yeah. it, you have to learn a lot. You have to, you have to figure out how to present yourself, and I had never done that before. How do you, how'd you figure it out? I'm still figuring it out, yeah. <laughs> still figuring it out. Um, uh, I think just you just do it. You just keep doing it. And I think uh, the more you connect to yourself and not and stop trying to be anything other than what you are. And you know, I think I think I think it's just about yeah, being yourself. Is there anybody on the show that's kind of mentored for you in terms of the work ethic and approach to it? Oh, I've learned something from all of them. I mean, each each one of those people are. I mean, they're all hugely talented, and I look up to them all as actors, but each one of them teaches me a different lesson every day. Um, you know, Rick Hoffman is somebody who I admire. He plays Lewis on the show, and I think he's one of just, like, the most naturally gifted people I've ever worked with. So he teaches me a lot about commitment to the show and to honoring the show. And um, uh, Gina Torres teaches me about being a professional. I've never met anyone more professional. She will never bring anything to the set hmm. uh, that other than just, just being a total pro. Um, she leaves everything else at home. Uh, Gabriel brings a lot of humor to the set. He's a great leader of the set. Sarah is just fiercely talented and hmm. brings like she's got theater background. So I think she just comes in with so many great ideas. And uh, Megan is just so relaxed and easy to work with. So everybody's got something they're teaching me. You brought up family a couple times and your real life fiance, mm-hmm. actress uh, Troyan uh, Belisario, plays your ex girlfriend on the show. Yeah. 
What's that yeah, like for the two of you? It was great. It was great. Now I've been on her show now too, and uh, and she's come onto the show a couple of times, and uh, it's it's terrific. We love working together, which is it's just great. And we spend so much of the year apart, so any excuse that I can get a network to fly her up here is just fine by us. <laughs> As actors, is it tempting to draw on your real relationship? Um, no, I think we really keep. I think we've learned we have to really keep that stuff separate. You know, I think there's a lot of pitfalls to two actors dating each other. Acting can be a really sort of introverted and selfish profession. You spend a lot of time thinking about yourself. And I think anybody who's been in a relationship that even is close to working, you you can't <laughs> behave yeah. that way. Um, and we've learned that the hard way. I think we've had a lot of times where we've been selfish or been thinking about ourselves. And it just, you can't, you can't um, make a relationship work over that this long this long distance if you're if you're constantly in that state of mind so we have our work and then we have our lives and i think they're pretty separate that's a sort of a plot that's mirrored on the show you have people in very demanding jobs and trying to make relationships work mm -hmm. is that something you drew on as well as far as uh, approaching the show and and those dilemmas that the yeah, characters I go think, through i think that's a good point i think the struggle of the struggle of what we've been doing and the struggle of just making a television series is definitely informed um, the stakes of the show. I think I think those are just sort of lingering right on the surface when we show up to set. So I think that's a good point. We bring that with us. Let's talk a bit about your career now. What mm -hmm. sort of roles are attracting you outside of this series? Um, God, any anything. I'm so hungry uh, to do more right now. Um, Troy and I are really in a place where we want to create our own work. I think we figured out that if you sit around and wait for other people to give you work. Uh, you could be waiting a very long time. So because of the schedule of the show and we shoot eight months of the year, there's not a ton of time to uh, to fit in other things. So we uh, we wrote a script that we're going to go shoot in September up in uh, Haida Gwaii off the coast of British Columbia. and uh, Feature length? Uh, not feature, okay. short. I, I'm directing it too, so I wasn't totally prepared to jump into the feature. But we got a very generous grant from uh, Bravo. They have a program called the Bravo Fact Grants that they, I'm not sure, they think they give out eight or something. I'm totally, probably wrong about that. Yeah. But we were uh, lucky enough to get one of those. So we're going to go shoot that in September. And we wrote that together and we're going to be in that together. That's, so That's great. You yeah. you made your directorial debut uh, in terms of television, right? Mm -hmm. With Suits this yeah. season. And yeah. you've told me that Troyan's a talented writer. So this is a Yeah, her dad's a writer. You know, so her dad is uh, Don Belisario. He created NCIS and JAG and Magnum Airwolf PI. and Magnum PI. Yeah. And yeah, so he, she comes from a writing family. I am uh, I love the idea of writing. My father's an incredible writer, but I I haven't, uh, I haven't yet figured out how to totally do it. Again, the lazy thing. <laughs> well, you strike me as someone with interests outside of acting, too. Mm -hmm. you, you listen particularly closely to the, the Mark Bittman interview. Yeah, yeah. W what interests you outside of... Uh the screen. I really love that interview, actually, that you kind of, we, I texted you after that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the, the environment is quickly becoming a more important cause to me. My, um, my sister, Meredith, uh, was, it, it was a heavy act, a big activist with Greenpeace for many years, and she lives out in British Columbia, and she was part of a lot of action. So I grew up with that in the house, but it was never really my thing. As I'm getting older, um, I'm, I'm becoming more interested in that. I met Al Gore a couple of weeks ago when he was here with his climate reality project and got to go see his slideshow and, and sort of talk to them about ways that I could be helpful um, with what they're doing. So, you know, I'm interested in that. The food thing, I think, is directly related to it. I thought that interview was fascinating because I think it's part of our culture and, and part of the environment and, and how we need to uh, make some big changes in the way we all live our lives to, to head towards something more healthy. Um, I'm a big photographer, too. I spend a lot of time taking pictures, mostly now of the suit set because that's where I am most of the time. So yeah. I had my first gallery show in New York last year of suits photographs. And, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I try and keep myself busy I try and have other things but directing is becoming quickly the thing I'm most fascinated by it's not necessarily the thing I think I need to do but um, I'm 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 heavily detail oriented I'm a Virgo I love kind of maybe a control freak too and I just love having that many questions to answer in a day well uh, I wish you much continued success thank you uh, and I'm looking forward as you know to the next season thanks yeah, so much of course thank you